Orale! What's up, homies? It's Wu Tang Wednesday, and we're gonna be going Wu Tang and America Saga. You don't wanna miss this one. Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. All right, there we go. We're live. <clears throat> All right, so. What's up, Orale? What's <laughs> up, homies? <laughs> we got the first part, goddammit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, you know, no konnichiwa, bitches. I mean, this is a new episode. <laughs> <laughs> konnichiwa, bitches. There you go. <laughs> I'm sorry, you threw me off with the uh, forgetting the first part of the thing, so. Oh, it's your yeah. Fault. Yeah. So. Welcome to uh, whatever day this episode gets uh, posted on YouTube, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's, uh, uh, it's well, why not? Why not put it up on Wednesday? It's Wu Tang Wednesday. Wu Tang Wednesday. All right, we'll put it up on Wednesday. I'll schedule it for Wednesday. Wu Tang right. Wednesday. Yeah. So right. uh, to today's episode, uh, I'm sure as I probably mentioned, uh, we're talking about uh, Wu Tang, an American saga which is a uh, semi-autobiographical docuseries on the Hulu. Yep. Um, it's uh, produced by uh, several members of the Wu-Tang Clan, from what I saw. Uh, the yeah. RZA, yeah. Method Man, um, uh, I, I don't know who else. Those are the two names that popped out. I, yeah, I, I and, didn't I thought, and, the rest of it. and I thought that was fucked up, because that, that's more of them doing things the wrong way. Every member should have been a producer on this fucking show um i, I saw on on a few credits that uh, uh several of the members have at least um they all have some kind of credit. credit yeah 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 so they there's their producers or their consultants yeah but i'm like yeah they i'm like to keep it all fair because the producer is going to take more money than a consultant that they should all be a producer because it's their story as a group. right yeah. right um and that and that keeps it for either further beef if, if um somebody makes way more money off of the show like say for instance this launches uh rizza and method man's production company or some shit and they start producing more movies or some shit like that and the other one's still fucking left out in some capacity you know what i'm saying it, yeah. it, it, it keeps the tensions low it, right it, you know seeing that they've already had these kind of money troubles and wondering who gets paid what and shit like that you know what i'm saying right like split the split that pie four ways make it easy for everybody right um right. but yeah i i love the show i love it it could be better um <laughs> you know um, how? how how could it be better because i mean i'm looking at it from you know i'm not you know, steeped deep in hip hop. It's not. It's not about the woo shit. It's just about the production shit. You know. Okay. Like, Again, um, how could it be better? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> now, now that's my forte. So it's you know. <laughs> it's it, it feels it, it feels based on the environments that they're in. It feels a little vacant. You know, when you it look feels at a little set, what vacant, like oh, when you gotcha. look at the the sets and the scenes and stuff like that. For a densely populated uh, urban environment, it feels very vacant well extras you know cost a lot of money I, that's why i said production they did give the show more money <laughs> they can't give I, it more money because they black <laughs> yeah. you racist this has got a lot of white friends man this has got a, a lot of white friends you right know, so but uh i i like it uh story-wise production-wise I, I mean i understand why it doesn't have a whole lot of people in it especially for such a densely populated you know city like new york uh, uh extras do cost a lot of money and you know you don't yeah, have yeah. those movie budgets well, you got that I mean, Tom cruise money you know that that's the one thing that pulls me out of the show is that that full-on new york vibe you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um <clears throat> you know when i look at a tv show like snowfall that transpires around the time in which I was born, everything looks authentic <laughs> to LA. You know what I'm saying? Like right. the houses, the environments, the streets. And like, 
I know these places. I've been there before. This is how these places look. And so Wait, it you said Snowfall? Yeah. What's that on? Um, that's on FX. It's also on Hulu. Um, gotcha. They have like four seasons. It's a bomb ass show. It's a a fictional story based around the life and exploits of Freeway Rick Ross and the uh, cocaine CIA connection. Mm. It's, it was. I it like was, it already. <clears throat> it was produced by um, what's that fucking dude name? Um, the dude who made uh, Boys in the Hood. Singleton. John Singleton. Yeah, John Didn't Singleton. Did he die? Yeah, he died yeah, during like the the second or third season of the show. Okay. Um, but he did he did Rick Ross wrong. So he was shopping around uh, a, a movie or a TV show about uh, Free Rick Ross life. But it seemed like the big wigs didn't want to be in business with Rick Ross. He basically, he, then he goes off and reinvents the show. Right. Tells the same exact story. Okay. But changes it a little bit. Yeah. And causes snowfall and produces it without giving free red rick ross any credit all right and then rick ross uh ran up on him and he was like okay man i'm gonna try to help you out i you know put you on the show as a consultant or some shit like that and it never happened and then he died so wu-tang ain't nothing to fuck with yeah (laughs) so so I, I, i i I didn't I didn't initially watch the show because I felt like there, it was a theft involved. Yeah. On, on some bitch shit. And then I kind of fell into it because people just kept saying the show is a bomb. Look, I'm trying to get it back to Wu Tang because I'm Paul, getting it sounds I'm, like I'm, it's I'm, another it sounds like it's another conversation. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm running it back. Wu Tang ain't nothing to fuck with. I'm running it back to Wu Tang. All I'm saying is the production value um could could be higher. Um, right. I like a lot of the cast members. Um, they're doing their thing. Uh, D Lover. Um, seeing the Ghostface is my favorite rapper out of the group at the moment. Right. Um, he's he's doing a good job. You know what I'm saying? Even it, like he's a little bit more legible than mm. than Ghostface Killer is in real life. <laughs> so right. that's yeah. that's the thing that throws me off because like the interviews I heard of Ghostface, he could be a little, little uh cryptic, you know. Yeah, and at, at times, like when he when he's the angry ghost face, it kind of comes comes through a little bit. I see yeah. it, but then when he's just regular talking, I'm like you sound too intelligent. <laughs> you know, That's or, racist. I'm, I'm not I'm not painting a broad brush uh, about people. I'm talking about him in general. Yeah, because that's cause racist what, saying that I'm, a black man, black man sounds intelligent. That's racist. That's what white when, people say. When, when, I've, <laughs> when I've seen him in um, when I've seen him in interviews, it's a lot of oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, son. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, yeah. like right. if you don't know what he's saying, you don't know what he's saying. Right. Um, <laughs> so I was like, how the fuck are you going? How, how are you going to make this, you know, feel authentic if he's being more coherent than he usually is in the interviews you've seen him in. You know? well, be accessible. There's got to be so yeah, it's got to be some poetic license, you know. Of when, course. And I and I do I do love the poetic license they actually take uh on on the show, right? I mean, cuz this is essentially Riz's show, you know, he's like the central character. Yeah. Cuz right. he's cuz he's the one who brings the Wu-Tang clan together. Right? right? And yes. so uh, I do like the poetic license, like the imagery they use to get inside of Riz's head. Uh, so oh, those are the, the, those are the things I hate the most. Like, nigga, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't need to know how your head works. <laughs> and, 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 and unless unless it's like the ultimate high budget creativity shit on some Inception uh, tenant level of yeah. the exploration. Yeah. I don't want to see it. it just Man, you, you, it's you hate you, it. It's because you just been spoiled. That's all. <laughs> nah, it he just hating. No, no, no. Like uh, I, I sent out two invites to friends to be a part a guest on the show. One is a music producer slash tattoo artist um, out of Atlanta, and he loves the show but hates the show simultaneously. So where's it? Where's he at? Um, I sent him the invite last night. 
you know, to see like when when they're available because I knew we were going to talk about the woo. Yeah. Um, but I'm like, okay, I don't know if I don't know if we're going to talk about the whole series or at least one um, one season. Well, right now we're just talking broadly. But, yeah. I mean, but <laughs> I mean, you've only seen the first season, so we're not going to talk about the second season. Anyway. Well, I'm 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 like seven episodes into I'm on episode seven airwaves of season two. Look, uh, more and con- I, see that, more con- I see there's more. More content, just make it two shows. Boom. Hey, well, why did my what did my dumbass high self just think when you said because he loved because your homie loves the show? I thought, wait, he, our he, show that you don't no, know? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, realized, I realized, wait, like we got hold on, he's talking about Wu Tang, like because like we got fans like that, man. <laughs> you know what I, mean? uh, I know, right? <laughs> Um, by the no. way, by the way, uh, folks, if you haven't heard, uh, help us get to 100 subscribers and we'll give everybody discounts at the merch store. Uh, www.chinoandhomeboy.myshopify.com. Right on. Yeah. What he said. Yeah. Right. Continue. Um, yeah. No, but he hates the lead actor. Oh, why? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Is it because uh, he, well, he sounds like DMX? No, no. I mean, like, okay. Stupid. My thing is, is RZA outside of him producing the music is one of my least favorite um, Wu members. Like, I hate him rapping. I hate him the way he talks. He sounds like he has marbles in his mouth. Um, and you know, and then he has his lingo on top of that. So it's too much shit to decode, right? And you get this guy in here, and I'm like. He totally, like, I can hear him a little bit more coherently because he doesn't have the speech impediment that uh, the Riz has. But he, the the way it's written, he's talking that, you know, he, he sounds like what Riz would sound like, you know? Outside of him being a dark-skinned dude, he fits yeah. he the mold of what I would envision the Riz being like, you know, in person. Yeah. But my homie, he hates that shit. Like, he's like, I love the show. You know, I love the Wu Tang, but this nigga, like he, he can't. <laughs> so like he'd be the perfect person to kind of review the this because he's he's gonna have some funny shit. Like he, right? Like, I've I've never met, I've never heard your homie, I've never met your homie, but I could actually hear him saying that, like this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I could actually, I, 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 in my mind's eye, I could see that happening, and I could hear. No, no. You know, he, he, <laughs> he's just funny. He's a, he's a um. <laughs> He's he's a he's a guy who who has some really uh, ill ideas to get a lot of conversations started on Facebook. Um, yeah, like uh, like we're just Facebook buddies. Like he knows some people that I know in real life, and me and him just met on online talking shit, you know. And so he always puts out some interesting uh, topics or ideas that just get conversations flowing. Right on. Yeah. All right. So he, yeah. Let's get him in the show cool creative dude but i'm like he he has some strong opinions about the show um <laughs> right you know but um i i do i do like the show i do like the casting um i didn't like the fact that they made them all re-rap the songs for real in their own voice opposed to playing the original shit um, right which i would have preferred better why because you know? uh some of them don't sound good <laughs> Like Dave East doesn't sound, he's a step, be, like some of them are a step behind the originals, you know? I mean, to so be like, fair, he is, you know, he is trying to rap like Method Man. I mean, yeah, but uh, Method Man's like, got a real ass flow, but look. No, they, but I'm, I'm saying, but it's, it's lit, nigga, 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 nigga. I went to a ghost face killer show. Right. And watched a dude in the audience get up and do Method Man's part of a song with with the whole body movements of method man and sound more like <laughs> method man than this motherfucker and, it, and, it, and it's not like, enough it's not the tone of the voice it's his delivery his delivery and speed is like two steps be- behind what method man would deliver that all right you know so, what I'm so so I, i'm guessing so i'm guessing that aside from watching wu-tang uh in american saga i'm gonna have to go uh into turnstile and go listen and go to, to a Ghostface Killer show. Uh, <laughs> no, no. But uh, listen, listen. Actually, listen to the Wu Tang 
uh, Wu-Tang Clan albums and their individual albums and shit. You know, all you need to do... 36 Chambers. Is, is listen to 36 Chambers. That's it. Yep. Man, look, that, that, that album has been on my playlist every day I go to the gym. But how am I supposed to pick my favorite if I haven't heard their individual shit? Um, okay, that's true. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I need to have a favorite, just like you got a favorite now. I need to catch up. I feel left out. I feel like I feel left out this convo. <laughs> it, it, it's it's a lot of fucking music, bro. It's a lot of fucking music. I, I can listen. That's to all it. I'm saying. Like, like Look, when it when I, all, when it I all sit, started. I sit in like, my I sit I sit in my office and I stare at pink walls. All right, I can I can I can listen to some Wu Tang. I listen to music all day anyway. Yeah. All right, no problem. My my minions, my minions are probably gonna think like, "What the hell is homeboy on?" Shit, is he gonna is he gonna come out and start shooting or what? <laughs> I, I, I say listen to the prime members first. So that would be um, Method Man, ODB, Raekwon, Ghostface, and the RZA. Okay, make that list. Put it on Discord because I'm not gonna remember all that. Okay, uh, I will throw it on there. Now, am um, I gonna? Ha- now, you want me to listen to their individual albums first, then listen to no, Thirty Six Chambers? No, no. Or listen to Thirty Six th- Chambers first. Listen to Thirty Six Chambers because this is what these two seasons are about: is making that particular album. Okay. And then, if you want to fine tune your liking, if you haven't figured out who you like the most, then yeah, go and listen to the individual albums, but start with the core members. The well, the, it's not necessarily core members; they're all core members, <laughs> but they. I would like to say. They're tiered members because of popularity. Okay. So, so right. Method Man came out first, was the first to drop. He was popular. Um, then ODB came out. Then I think uh, Only Built for Cuban Links came out. And that's kind of like a Ghostface and Raekwon duo album, even though it's a Raekwon album. Um, and that shit's a classic. Like that, that was the hardest hitting, um, you know, for me that's that that album is a classic like method man album really didn't really hit as hard as it should have um odb shit is is amazing but it's it's a uh what do you call it might be an acquired taste for some i love it roland loves it we we burnt that man no real name son (laughs) nobody know who that nigga is We don't want to get no real names, bro. No real names, because then I gotta go back and listen to this shit and fucking bleep that shit out. Mark the, mark the time right now, then. Mark I can't the mark the time. We're not on Skype. No. <laughs> I don't have a fucking time code on this bitch. That's what fucking sucks about this fucking Zoom shit. <laughs> I, I'll see if they have an add-on for a time code. Okay. Why? Why are you so angry? Yeah. Why are you so aggy? Because I gotta um, work. <laughs> I gotta work after this, man. Oh, <laughs> you got time like coming out to Wednesday. I know yeah. that's true. Look, look, Ho- Hozu ain't even out yet because I got to go back and bleep shit out from that bitch. That's right. Yeah, and that's two and a half hours long. <laughs> no, bro, no, I asked him about that shit because I wanted to listen to it, and I'm like, hey, where the fuck is a Hozu episode? <laughs> <laughs> Man, that was a good one. Oh, well, let me get back look, to I got that. A real job, son. <laughs> look, I gotta man. do that too. <laughs> Look, man, I was fucking this week. I talk about having a real job. Oh, uh, I'm working 10 hour shifts. I got a client trying to launch their website um, on Wix of all platforms. Right. Having issues trying to launch it from do shit from my cell phone at my desk. So I don't because I can't just leave and break out my laptop somewhere. Yeah. And then working on the shit at lunch, uh, using the Wi-Fi from my phone and still not getting traction at the hire. Well, I'd already hired my homeboy's wife to help me finish, finish this shit and fix yeah. some issues and then calling her up to try to get her to mitigate some things only to find out at the end that none of this shit was possible because they would have to switch their payment um, gateway, not payment gateway. They need to update their payment card. And because it was for a governmental entity, they would have to go talk to the purchasing people. So all the fucking work I did at work trying to <laughs> fix their fucking problem Man. was for not. Yeah. That's got to be frustrating. Although the client and my client 
thank me for all the hard and extra work I did. To try <laughs> because to that pays your bills. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I mean, like literally my, my, my direct client, uh, which was a studio owner, she um, hit me up. was like, man, thank you for all the extra work you've done. It was a pleasure to work with you at all, as always. And I was like, oh, damn. Actually, like this props. week, I got, I'm, I'm I, got I got two comments, two direct comments about how great it is to work with me uh, from two of my clients that I've never met in person. Right on. Nice. And one of them, I haven't even talked to her on the phone. Dang. Like, we've never met. Like, I don't know her voice. I mean, we've talked on the phone once or twice. Mm -hmm. But that's right. it. And I've been doing work for her for about, like, three years now. Well. Well, you got props. Good on you. Yeah. Gold start yeah. to you. Now back to this woo shit. Yes. <laughs> woo tank ain't nothing to fuck with. Woo tank yeah. so, ain't nothing to fuck with. <laughs> so based on popularity and classic albums, um, that's how the, the members are divided. Like who, who are more popular. So RZA, well, R nobody listens to the RZA's albums for the most part, as far as I know. Uh, uh, I mean, I kind of liked, I liked his, I liked his rap about being the sperm and, you know, I hate you know, this. I, uh, pollinating I, I hate, and I pollinating the too. egg. He's probably ruined more, more, more Wu-Tang songs for me than anything. And for some <laughs> reason, he's very, he's very interested in fucking bitches on their period. That, that, that shit pops up too fucking often. Like on, on, um. Supreme Clientele, which is one of my favorite albums of the Wu, Wu members. It's a Ghostface Killer album. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a quick, short, like maybe a, a minute and a half song or something like that at, that opens up the album. And yeah. Ghostface Killer's kicking that shit and it's banging. And then all mm -hmm. of a sudden he has some line about Bruce Lee in it. And then it cuts and then fucking RZA comes on and starts talking about period blood. <laughs> I'm like, nigga, why? <laughs> why? Like, literally, I made, for my MP3 days, I ripped the album and then edited his part off and made my own fucking cut with him not on that song. Because <laughs> I was like, this song was perfect, didn't need you, and could have just ended. Right. And then you come in here with some dumb shit and a whack verse and your marble mouth Period voice <laughs> and just ruin everything. Right. <laughs> wow oh man now is this the only song where he talks about period blood or is there another no. song where he talks about period there blood? there's others there's others because <laughs> he also he also writes him and the jizza have written um some of odb stuff and there's right. some period blood shit in in some of those rhymes to it right yeah. Has anyone ever asked the RZA what it is about him and period blood that you know it's it's a it's a it's a frequent frequent theme or topic that he has to have a conversation on? Um, I don't think so. But if I ever interview him, I would ask. All right, RZA. Hey, listen, if you're out there and you listen to the Chino and Homeboy podcast, because someone told you that you get like a twenty percent discount in the merch store if we reach a hundred subscribers, uh, hit, hit us up in the comment section. Let us know why why you have this thing about period blood and sperm and fallopian yeah. and shit. <laughs> yeah, and like it's, it's all it's all in that mix. Period blood. Yeah, the super sperm and fallopian. You know, like it's very gynecological. <laughs> and I don't know why. I mean, the only thing that's gynecological about me is my penis. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. I mean, maybe he yeah. likes anatomy. So um, I, I, yeah, maybe. Yeah, because I just recently listened to uh, Ghostface Killer's first album because it's on this 20-something year anniversary, I think, this year. Right. Um, uh, and it's called Iron Man. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm listening to it. I'm like, I really don't like it. But now, Supreme, they, they're still, now they're still making music? Yeah. yeah. Ghostface Killer just put out album this year or last year. How Ghost many albums? Ghost, Ghostface Killer probably has the most al solo albums out of any member in a group. Like he he stays consistently producing. Right. Yeah. It doesn't doesn't Ghostface Killer have the uh, the highest net worth currently of all the Wu members? I have no idea. I think I looked that up somewhere. I may have seen it somewhere. Because all he does is make music. Like Method Man it's has TV shows and 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 a side smart group. investments. Yeah. Maybe maybe he's you know maybe he's uh. Uh, like I, I would think, Ellen Drugs again. 
I, I, I would think RZA or Method Man would have had the most net worth because RZA has movies and other things and the production company, you know, that gets the most out of the Wu earnings. Um, I would assume he had the highest net worth. Well, I mean, just because, you know, he's the CEO or, or you know, just because he's the one in charge of the corporation doesn't mean uh, he necessarily has... You know, no, but I'm saying the corporation takes a piece of everything, is what I'm saying. Like, he's a plug and he's a producer on most of their albums, so he gets money from that, right? Um, well, I you mean, know what I'm saying? So, I, like, I, I get what you're saying, but um, and then on top of that, he's producing movies, he's doing scores for movies, you know, yeah. Um, well, and then right. Method Man has movies, TV shows, um, more successful albums with Red Man, yeah. <laughs> than, now, than is, I can only, is I can Red only Man? speak to it. Um, is Google Red Man told me is Red Man part of the Wu Tang Clan or is he one no. of them killer, no, he's Wu, not. killer bees? No, he 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 is a honorary Wu Tang member. Okay, he Red Man dropped like years before Wu Tang even came out. Okay, I interrupted you, Chino. I apologize. No, I, I was just saying. Where's um, my apology, nigga? <laughs> you get it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> no, I was um, I was I was simply saying I'm I'm only. Um, reiterating what Google or excuse me, Jamie has told me. Right. You know, so um, because okay. uh, I, I looked up like I, th- I believe I looked up the Riz's net worth and uh, it was actually on the was it the Wikipedia page? Um, uh, it said that the, the, the Wu-Tang member with, with the highest net worth is Ghostface Killer. Well, we can't trust that because anything could be on that fucking page. I mean, that, that's true, which is why, you know, I, I said I'm only saying what uh, Google's told me. Right. Uh, Jamie. Oh. Jamie. 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 <laughs> Jamie. Jamie. <laughs> but anyway, okay. yeah, it's, I, I agree. I'm, I'm in complete agreement in that. I actually, I, I like the show. Like, I couldn't stop watching it, you know. Yeah. There, I, I there's, can't. There's, there's something just... about the grittiness of, of, of that. Like, there come up the story, you know, uh, was, was, a uh, there's something very compelling about it. And one of my favorites was, you know, this kind of sort of redemption story, you know, that uh, they had in particular when, when power and divine kind of joined forces again, you know, that mm-hmm. was to me like I, that, you know, it, it gave me the feel good, you know, the, the feel good feel, feelings, mm-hmm. you know? So uh, I, I really liked that part of the show that part of the story um and so um yeah like i said i I like the the grittiness of it i like the you know how how um how they wanted to be unfiltered you know uh and so that was that was a very compelling thing for me yeah i mean like i mean i think the thing that's the most compelling about them is their connections you know like Uh how they how they are connected is the thing that's the most interesting about them, you know, from being brothers and cousins. So like the 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 genius and ODB is Riz's cousin. Yep. They were the core members of Wu Tang at the beginning. They kind of flubbed that story a little bit, not flubbed it, but manipulated a little bit because they were the Wu Tang clan to begin with, and then they added the other members afterwards. Now um, the gotcha. genius, that's that's the, the Jizza. Jizza. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, I got a question. Why is it in the music video for Protect Your Neck, right? They got, they spelled the Jizza J I Z A H instead of G Z A. Um, I think the the initial, they, they changed the spelling later, basically. Okay. So, like, it, it started going through the Supreme Alphabet after that. And they got and the oh, and they got uh, and they all they all got That's some they five, all got, they all got multiple stuff. pseudonyms, you know. Yeah. Like el 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 be, el bebé Jesús. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> el, yeah. El, el gran niño Jesús. El gran go. niño Jesús. That's right. Yeah. yeah. No, that's right. No, use you. I straight up look. I straight up thought. I straight up thought that fool was gonna go down there, give that old lady some weed, and then just bang the fuck out of her. And that's what I thought too. Yeah, I, I thought that's, that's, what, I thought that, that's where that was heading, but it didn't head because literally a lot of his stories are like that. Like he's, yeah. you know, he goes off, and then next thing you know, he's bonus and broad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, 
that's some yeah. class. That's a classic game, and that ain't even no. You, you know, you that's no red pill shit either, right? Like that's some good game. That's just yeah. great ass game. Um, yep. Well, he he's one of those. He's one of those. Uh, what do you call it? Free spirited, unpredictable motherfuckers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, and you know, women like that shit. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Rest in rest in peace, ODB. Little yeah, but I think Jesus. this. I think the spelling though. Um, they they started doing more five percenter stuff, so uh, they use the supreme alphabet, and um, I think Jizza got shortened to Jizza with G Z A. Now, who instead. the fuck? Who the fuck are the five percenters? Um, I, I still I still Black don't understand Muslims. who that is, and I don't want to Google it right now. Um, <laughs> I, mean, uh, they, I don't want to ask Jamie. <laughs> they are a subsect of muslim american um they're primarily based in new york um they're kind of like muslims that came out of jail and then created their own kind of logic around being muslim so so they created their own islamic cult in the united states yeah it's not a cult it's just, it's, there, there's no no signifying leaders like i think a lot of the the Wu members were involved in it at some point in time yeah. and now they're not you know Look, so that it listen, there's no Christi- there's christianity no... christianity in general is is a fucking cult all right no uh, well, it's a like death cult yes there's no there's no temples as far as i know there's no five percent of church it's just you know niggas in the street talking that shit <laughs> hey, look, listen, they tell they say that devil worshipers have cults. They don't have temples either. So, you know, uh. as far as I know, it's basically like you get a book, you read that book and you just talk to other people about that book. And you memorize yeah. it. and Oh, so like Hare Krishna's that cult. Well, what's that? What's that thing? That they <laughs> yeah, but it's not that big. <laughs> But it's not that big. <laughs> There's no five percent of soup kitchens, right? <laughs> there should be. <laughs> well, god damn it, there should be. What's that question that they asked? Like, what what is what are today's mathematics? Yeah, yeah. what are today's, what are today's mathematics? mathematics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because because everything, all these numbers have a thing. So like um that's the 36, 36 chambers, right? Didn't does doesn't that no. have like a thing? No, that just comes from the fucking movie. Yeah. Oh, okay. That just comes from the uh, Kung Fu movie. The um, Thirty Six Chambers of Shaolin. So, so no, but like each letter represents something. Yeah. You know, so one letter might mean knowledge. Um, Z stands for Zig Ziglar, which is the, like the path of going through life where you zigzag. Zigzag, zig. Yeah. 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 So, so like every everything has a and, and even the the singer SZA. Um, her name is based on five percent or um, supreme alphabet. Well, it, it looks to me like uh, P stands for period blood. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the supreme alphabet. <laughs> period blood. <laughs> the men's. <laughs> That's gross, bro. Oh, uh, we're getting canceled for that one. Oh, show. <laughs> All right, so let, let me see. I just pull pulled up the Supreme Alphabet real quick, just just for uh. So A is Allah. B is to be or born. The letter C is for the word C as in seeing. Um, D is for divine. E equality. F Father. G God. Um, H He or Her. I as an I human, um, J for justice, K for king, uh, L is love, hell or right, um, M is for master, uh, N is for now or end, O is for cipher, P is for power, Q is for queen. queen. Uh, <laughs> you know, it goes through. So technically, the Jizz's the Jizz's name means God zigzag zig Allah. Allah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, I guess. I, I suppose <laughs> Riza is is you know a bit more it, it's accessible ruler, than ruler zigzag zig Allah. Yeah. Can I be can it can can I be the Pizza then? Period um, blood. Period blood zigzag that, Allah. That'll be 
power zigzag a lot. Oh, <laughs> period blood zigzag asshole. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we get, we yeah. can get some fucking five percenters in our door. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Don't play with them because they will roll up, run up on you. Yeah, yeah. You know we're, what? We're, you know what? The five percenters re- are closer to and less organized than uh, the black Israelites. Right. Yeah. So yeah. That, that, like, they were in the, the show too. Yeah, yeah. That that's the closest um, closest description I can give you to them. Yeah. yeah. Listen, five percenters. If you were offended uh, in any way, shape, or form by what I said. Uh, fuck your feelings. <laughs> well, well, you, well, you you saw you saw them getting ready to to, to crack heads just over the the debate of uh, religion shit, right? Yeah, yeah. They 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 take that shit uh, extremely serious. Like if they run up on you with what's today's mathematics and you don't know it, you might catch a beat down. Yeah, well, you know, that kind of sounds like a terrorist organization to me. I mean, I used to be in Uncle Sam's army. Uh, I mean, Navy. And uh, I remember when... Which was a cult too, by the way. Yeah. And I remember when uh, hearing a news story about how they bombed, how the, how the fundamentalist uh, Islamists bombed a, um, uh, a comic, uh, comic production or someone who made comics of, uh, and, and drew Allah as oh, a person. Oh, somebody, I mean, yeah. Somebody drew Allah as a person and motherfuckers... Uh, bombed that shit. Or bombed yeah. Wasn't that in, uh, in Paris? Yeah, that was in France. Yeah, that was in France. So I don't know any anyone that's gonna throw down a beatdown because they can't take a joke about they got that, that sounds like a terrorist organization to me. I guess I, mean, I yeah. am Republican, so I mean I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing, people. I'm just playing. I ain't looking to get bombed. Okay, like relax, <laughs> shit. It's just Hooray. jokes, man. It's just jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why don't you that's write jokes most, about that's Christians? Like the most, that's like the most Republican thing I've said. That's just jokes, people. Don't don't take don't take offense. Look, we made fun of white people in last episode, so relax, right? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you write jokes about Christians? I don't know. What are they gonna do? Forgive yeah, exactly. me. I'm, exactly. I'm not scared of them. <laughs> <laughs> Were they gonna forgive me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no one's scared of you <laughs> right exactly exactly peace when was love. the last time you blew something up peace and love no one's scared of you <laughs> that's right yeah that's no right. well i was expecting this i don't know more. when you say that shit i'm like didn't, didn't we like blow up afghanistan and iraq for 20 years i mean yep <laughs> well well to be fair that wasn't the church there wasn't the Christians. There wasn't, uh, you know, Jesus' fucking uh, constituents or whatever you want to call them. Right. That's, that was Uncle Sam. And we are a secular country, no matter what people fucking say. Yeah, that's true. But a lot of his members thought it was some kind of holy war. That's for sure. You know. Yeah, well, they're part <laughs> of the fucking problem as well. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, That's back- right. Fight me. <laughs> back to the woo. Back to the woo. Uh, so, so, uh, yeah, so I like the show. <laughs> <laughs> right. All that shit to say, I like, we the, like show. the show. Yeah. yeah. I think, I yeah. think it's a, I think it's a good biopic. I mean, oh, uh, one thing and I stop saying say. fucking biopic It's biopic. Biographical <laughs> picture. <laughs> I don't know I like, who, who started this whole like, biopic <laughs> bullshit, but when the it's... fact that you're a movie maker and a screenwriter with a fucking English degree. I don't understand how you've fallen into this shithole of a fucking word. Biopic sounds like I can't see it with my yeah. <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> oh, man. So, so what I like about this biopic... <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. I knew he was going to do that shit. <laughs> At some point oh, in time, you're gonna poke this bear too many times, and you know what happens. Uh, anyway, you hear that, five percenters? You, like? you hear that? You don't even have to give me the beat down. Hey, Joe's gonna give it for, give, gonna do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what did you like about this biopic? <laughs> I like how they mark the time using uh, hip hop 
hip hop music um, that were that was uh, present and relevant at the time that uh, the year and shit. You mm-hmm. know, like uh, there was um, there was one scene where I think I heard um, LL Cool J's uh, one of LL Cool J's Mr. Smith um, songs. Uh, was it the doing it that one? Mm-hmm. The one that goes. They paid a lot of homage um, in that background music in the show, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah, Cause it, yeah. Because because like you say, it really did mark the time and the era. Yeah, and it let it letting you know like what was actually the sound at that time and how different their sound was to everything that existed at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I I, I personally remember the the first time I heard the Wu Tang Clan. Um listening to them on the radio on Saturday night and they came up on um the wake up show and they end up playing protect your neck and method man and like as soon as I heard them they were instant bangers yeah like like I've never heard anything like this shit and it's banging and they actually oh well that that's in season two so I'm not gonna get that up <laughs> right but uh but yeah um yeah, so so like there's there's a hell of a lot of nostalgia in it for me on top of everything else. Yeah, right. Because right. I I really listened to to that album heavily, um, and then I also listened to like ODB was like one of my favorites, um, and the guy that got playing him is like knocking that shit down. I know, right? Unbelievably well. And when you yep. see him in the second season, it's even it's even better. Like right. you know, they, they give him a little bit more space to operate. Mm-hmm. um but uh yeah but up until till then um the brother playing um what do you call it uh the sh- uh raekwon yeah mm-hmm. is he he's killing it because like okay so like the difference with what i was talking about with ghostface yeah this guy actually sounds like and acts like raekwon that i know from interviews and music yeah like like his shit is He's probably like the most spot on impression out of everybody in in the group, right? That I that I know of, you know, because um, some of the lesser members of the group, I, I've never really heard them speak or do interviews, so I can't can't um, lock in on them. Yeah, but the guy who's playing Jizza actually looks like the Jizza a lot, um, <laughs> so yeah. that that helps his believability. But with that dude, I'm like, he's wearing a fat suit, you know, try to just to get Raekwon's look because he was a, you know, the heavy set fellow. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But the way he talks sounds like even his voice kind of has that same vibe as uh, Raekwon, Raekwon. In, in real life. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? Uh, so like, because because I think in the first season, him and Ghostface story kind of carries a lot of, a lot of weight in that first season. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Um, and it's an awesome story of like arch rivals becoming the best of pals and, and all that shit. And, yeah. um, you know, I mean, like, like I have very few major complaints about the show. Mm-hmm. Most of it is, is awesome. I just wish, wish the shit was like a 20, a 20 episode season or some shit like that. Right. You know? Like give this show more money, give me more episodes, make this shit as authentic as possible. And right. I'm wondering. Yeah, I, I, I'm wondering how much of the how much of the budget went to getting these songs, which then lessened the production value of the show. Probably yeah. a lot. Yeah. Because I mean the, the music part of it. Because because I think even that show uh, that they had on um, Netflix, uh, the the breakdown or the or the boogie down or some shit like that. It was a. It was kind of like a hip hop musical thing. Yeah. Uh, and in the second season, uh, they cut it, and they because they said a lot of their budget was going to paying for royalties for music. Yeah, yeah, that happens, man. Like music, uh, music is big in the the royalty fees because uh, yeah. you you pay other you can you can get paid three different three different ways for music, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you can get paid if someone just uses your lyrics, right? Like they put their own, they put their own music down. They do, like they they do an interpretation of your song, and if you're the one who wrote the lyrics, then yeah, you get you get a royalty for that. Uh, you also get a royalty if uh, 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 what is it? They call it the mechanical royalty, 
which is they are taking they sample your song you know like right and add an extra ding to it yeah right and whatever right it's that it's that it's that it's that part you know it's that part um you get a mechanical fee for sampling right so if if you're the producer right you're the one who laid down the tracks and you know you mixed it up right you you played all the you, you, you played all the instruments you get the mechanical fee right uh and mm-hmm. if you're the writer of the music then you know but you know they they and and someone uses that you get that fee too i forgot what that one is but that's you can get paid three different ways uh, for them using your the written music for them sampling your music and then for them using your lyrics if you got lyrics to that shit hmm. yeah there's three ways to get paid in music if you're writing your own original shit hell yeah man you can get paid paid son god damn mm. and and you only need and you only need a, a a fucking a single banger too you know these one hit wonders right if they just you know invested their money right and shit uh with that one single if it's you know like la macarena and shit you know boom yeah, yeah well that's if they don't have a, a shitty record deal on top of that well i mean it does, well that's true yeah they don't have a shitty record deal because i know that that kid silento is in jail right now <laughs> so his his one hit wonder did not save his life yeah yeah no who in is fact, this it, the uh, watch me whip watch me watch me nay nay song oh oh okay he, he's in jail <laughs> um some kind of drug drug and violence charge i think well that's his dumb ass fault yep he brought that on himself yep. but if if uh you don't even need you don't even need a record contract for any of that shit i mean look at kobe kobe whatever the hell she wrote some fucking song oh, she was like some on. youtube shit and Hold on, slight segue. Rapper Silento charged with murder and cousin shooting death. So All right. Oh go. shit. <laughs> his his own cousin. Yeah. Hey, look, listen. Money, money don't change you. Money just makes you a bigger whatever asshole you were before you had money. So you know. I mean, that's true too. That that carries verisimilitude. Yep. 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 So th- this is what surprises me about the Wu Tang Clan you know, setting aside their beefs and, you know, coming together to make music, you know, that shit, that kind of shit takes, you know, leadership and that's, that kind of shit's really rare, really, if you think about it. Right. You know? Well, I think it worked because these guys actually, um, like the part that the, you don't see, um, which I think gets covered in, um, is one of the things I like about this other show called uh, On My Block is you um i used to watch that show yeah i i just i just finished the last season it was it was good um is how through uh grade school how you change and separate from friends from one year to the next you know Mm -hmm. and so all these all these guys grew up together in some capacity you know they were friends in elementary school or junior high school and then as time went by, they kind of separated and got involved in other shit and then became arch rivals. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then, but because of that long connection, I think, like if they never knew each other and they were arch rivals, I doubt this shit would be feasible, right? Yeah. But right. the fact that they all grew up in the same neighborhood, all went to school together in some capacity and all kind of knew one another in, in some way throughout life, it was able to mm-hmm. drop the bullshit and unify to become a bigger thing. Yeah, like the singular struggle, the idea of having like a, 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 a what is it, um, a shared a shared struggle, right? Which mm-hmm. is why a lot of like a lot of military veterans sometimes when they get into business together, they uh, they end up um, uh, stay staying in business for like a while because you know they got that that combined struggle that they they experience together. You know, so right. there's, some, there's 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 connected tissue there that that in the, in the relationship that uh, reinforces a lot of uh, you know I'm not gonna fuck this dude over because we just been through too much shit to do that right kind of thing. Well, so when I was in San Diego, I became part of I became part of this uh, MMA crew. Uh, we were we were uh, all of us were military veterans, and one of the one of the uh, I guess. Um, 
benefits of having this, you know, ragtag group of, of, of veterans beating up on each other is that, you know, it always felt like a family. And, and, you know, that is due to that shared struggle. And um, a lot of, a, a big reason why a lot of these guys stayed, you know, and used MMA training as some sort of adjunct therapy to, you know, to talk therapy, because a lot of these guys had PTSD, you know, like mm-hmm. they've seen, they, they, they had seen some shit, you know? And so um, the reason why they were able to, you know, um, use this as a form of therapy and uh, subsequently start going to talk therapy is the fact that, you know, the, the person next to him or the person in front of him that they're rolling with or, or sparring with or hitting a pads with or whatever, like on some level, they understand, okay, this person has seen the same shit that I saw. This person is going through the same shit that I'm going through, you know? And, you know, it's, it's exactly that type of shared struggle that, you know, brought them together. And I think that's what worked for the Wu-Tang Clan. You know, like, like Hey Jones said, they were able to just kind of, you know, like squash the beef and, you know, do what they had to do, you know? And so like the same thing happened with this MMA crew is that, you know, they would, they, they, they would start going to uh, therapy because initially the, um, at least, you know, from, from my research and, and you know, from talking to these guys, um, the, the biggest hurdle, uh, you know, the, the biggest objection that they had with going to talk therapy is, I mean, these guys are fucking warriors, right? Yeah. You know, they, they're not exactly taught as warriors to be, you know, to talk about their feelings. Yeah. You know? uh, and, and, you know, I'm hoping, I hope I'm not speaking out of line here, but, you know, like when, you know, when you're taught to be a fucking warrior, like you kind of get clowned on when, if, if you show anything soft, right? Show any kind of weakness. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And so, you know, the fact that they're able to go through this mil- um, to this military, tra- military training, you know, um, and then like, well, actually forget that whole thing about military training, but the, you know, the people that they're training with in this MMA group, you know, who, who have seen the same struggles that they, that they've seen, you know, that takes away from this idea that well, what the, why the fuck would I talk to a therapist who has no idea what the hell I'm talking about, what I've been through, right. you know, to have someone they can relate with, you know, in this group of, 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 uh, MMA, uh, veterans or, uh, military veterans doing MMA, you know, yeah. and so that, that kind of checks that box. And so, you know, um, they're able to kind of calm themselves enough or you know, not think about that, um, you know, aspect of it so much and say, you know what, I need help. Like this shit is, you know, it, it's, it's fucking me up. Let me start going to therapy. Let me start, you know, like I got this area part of my, you know, I got this part of my life, uh, taken care of. Yeah. Um, let me, let, let me try to get better. And so, um, so yeah, I, I think, you know, that shared struggle is, is an important, um, dimension of why, the Wu-Tang Clan was so successful because we were able to squash that beef, you know? Yeah. That's all I got. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Let me see. What else did I like about this show? Um, uh, It's got a lot of heart in it, you know? Uh, I really like that uh, these guys aren't just, you know, uh, cookie cutter type characters that, you typically see in like movies and shit and like no you you really genuine get to genuinely get to see like what kind of uh struggles you know they had to uh i don't want to say endure but what kind of struggles they had right uh the things the challenges that they faced as uh black young black men in uh what you could essentially say is a segregated community, even though there aren't any segregation laws anymore. um, Those communities were created during that time of segregation. And uh, it's, 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 it's still, it's uh, because this, they, 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 this, this show takes place like in the, like the, what is it? The late eighties, early nineties, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Like so, they, they they debuted like in 1995. Yeah, so uh, a lot of that, a lot of the 
uh, segregation stuff was still pretty well, pretty alive and present uh, in the late 80s and the, and the early 90s. A lot of that was still, you know, uh, prevalent in those communities, right? I mean, now we're like, what, 30 some odd years removed from that. And, you know, gentrification has steamrolled through these communities that they once lived in. Uh, and so, you know, you know, you're not gonna, you're probably not even gonna see a whole lot of that anymore. But I mean, what the hell do I know? I don't live in New York shit. You know, I just know that there are a lot of places here in LA that were predominantly, you know, Hispanic and, and, and African American and, you know, the gays moved in and well, you know, what happened? Gentrification. Right. Like how I rolled that back to the gays? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> very clever very clever we definitely getting canceled for this show that's that's all i'm saying that's all i'm saying i'm i and i and i'm just asking for a beat down at this point because you like, know look, before be, before you do or before we do i should say before we get canceled you gotta roll that hozu fucking episode out bro Oh yeah, yeah. I gotta roll out the whole episode. Yeah, Wu Tang Wednesday, the the whole zoo episode might might uh, might roll out on a turn, Turnstile Thursday since it's essentially right. an old show. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, there it is. It's perfect, actually. Yeah. Right. Perfect. Right. Yeah. So so yeah. But no, I mean, I really highly I, I highly recommend the show. I mean, even even if it is about the Wu Tang Clan, you know, it's there. There is a lot. Uh, in there about uh, the struggle of being a young African American uh, man in uh, New York during the late 80s, early 90s, and how still some of that is still a struggle. You know, even now, you know, 30 years removed from all of that uh, noise, you know, it's, uh, you know, there are still, still, uh, it's still, a, it's still a struggle for a lot of young black men. You know, yeah. there was a, yeah, I can't talk about season two. So, you know, there was something in season two that like really that uh, the RZA said about being young, black and growing up fatherless. And I'm like, man, that's still, that's still true to this day. So, right. you know, yeah. it's still true to this day. No, it, but, you know, like the other thing with, with this show, if you do know the music, right. And, and uh, you're going to start to relate certain things, uh, to it you know so you, you're going to pick out particular lines that they talked about in certain songs and you're going to read oh they're talking about that shit right here you know right um and whatnot you know what i'm saying yeah because uh, because I, I i was listening to the woo this week and i was like oh man i think that's they're kind of referencing that scene here you know yeah. even even yeah. even in, in um because in in the second season um they do protect your neck and yeah. so i was listening to that and then i'm realizing like they covered something that's talked in there they kind of covered in the show you know yeah. so it became a little bit more direct autobiographical yeah uh, even within that song you yeah. know what i'm saying um so you know i mean it, it's just it's just deep it's layered you know what i'm saying yeah and like you could watch it without knowing the music and like it and if you love the music or have have listened to the music before, it yeah. adds more layers to it, you know. Right. Well, I'm gonna uh, say this. Uh, I'm gonna say this. Um, I gotta say, look, if um, there's gonna be a season three, there's gonna be a season three. I, I'm gonna be disappointed if there's no period blood in it. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? God damn it, me too. Not because now the, the expectation is set. Right? Exactly. Exactly. You ruined me, Hey Jones. You ruined me. Now well, I'm I, expecting period blood, and I haven't seen it, and I know I'm not going to see it. I, I don't. I don't know where they go from here. You know, like yeah. Um, because it, well, it really it really gets scattered. They kind of they all do the, after this after what the second season delivered. Yeah. Um. You got the development of their their uh, solo, solo albums, careers, yeah, uh, yeah, touring, fights, breakups. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like I'm like to continue going is just going to be a lot of muck, you know. Well, it is called Wu Tang, an American saga. I mean, you know, 
You can't have a saga with just two seasons, man. Maybe. Maybe not. Watch them try, though. Okay. Yeah. Oh, they're going to try. They're going to try. I could tell. They should have yeah. called it They should have called the legend of Wu-Tang. That's true. Yeah. I mean, since, that... since, since they're, they're like, uh, not, it's not a direct autobiographical um, series. Right. That they should have just called it the legend since they're going to change so much. Yeah. Well, well, it is a biopic. So, uh, you know, it's got to sound like a biopic. You. <laughs> uh, you just made his day. Yeah. I mean, I can only be an asshole for so long. I mean, I, I didn't know you had a thing for, for someone saying it wrong, like biopic. I mean, uh, what is it? Yeah, uh, I hate cheap- that shit. Chino, Chino over there says tirade, which is actually the correct French way of saying it. But I go, I say tirade. Yep. You know, uh, what's the, there's another one. Um, uh, I forget what it was, but there's another one. There's another word that I say it a certain way and someone had to correct me on it. And like, but no, that, it's that not biopic, that. that biopic shit is new though. Everybody mm-hmm. used to say biopic back in the day, like 90s. Yeah, I I never said it. I never said it. Now I'm I'm 88 years old. I always call it bio, uh, biopic. Yeah. Well, like the word that you used earlier, uh, I I never use. Heard it. Losing you, hey Jones. You were looking a little pixelated. You know what? I, can you? Okay. No. The, we'll the, continue the, without me. The. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, the 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 word that I used earlier. Uh, I like to say it. Uh, very similitude or uh, very similitude, but yeah, I think the appropriate uh, pronunciation is very similitude. You know, no, it's 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 the way you say it. Oh, is it? There's, yeah. Well, I'm you know I stand corrected. Yeah, Who knew? No, it's it's correct. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, I just I just have a thing for words is what it is. So I I, 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 I like you said I pronounce it tirade not tirade. Yeah. You know, moot. No, is it moot? No, it's not moot. It's not moot. Moot point. No, moot it's not point, that yeah. one. It's close. Not, it's, some, it's something close to that. That I, I, I say it, and someone's like, "No, that's not how you say it." I'm like, all right. I mean, a, it, I should be saying it all right, but I always go, "I, I, yeah, I, <laughs> I." You know, am, I have am, I, am I back? Yeah, yes, you're back. You're back. Okay. I haven't crossed. I haven't crossed over into the finna part. You yeah, know, Finna. Yeah, Finna. I haven't crossed over to that yet. Yeah, me neither. Oh, I mean, I'm not, I'm I'm not sure. tragically hip enough for that. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm pretty sure that people are like struggling with like this dude really Mexican because I mean he doesn't sound like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean you are Republican, you know. That's yeah. true. That, That's that, true. That, that that gives you at least twenty five percent whiteness. You know. Yeah, I did want to. I did want to point out because we gotta we gotta close up shop here soon. I did want to point out something. I had an experience uh, pre-pandemic that I wanted to actually share with Hate Jones, and I, and I was not. I was. I, I have. I haven't been able to, you know, uh, discuss it because I forgot about it until I started watching Wu Tang, and you know the way they talk. I can't help but want to say "son" all the time, you know. Mm-hmm. But I had an experience at the local King Taco here uh, where I live. And uh, I was, uh, I, I, it is now a, a mostly predominant Hispanic neighborhood now, right? A lot of, it's a, it's a bedroom community with a lot of uh, middle income, uh, Hispanic people, Latin people, whatever the fuck they want to call themselves nowadays. Latinx now, is that what it is now? Is that the word we're using? I don't uh, know. Latin, Latinx does not have the will of people. All right. Well, I'm ethnically challenged anyway, because I don't know what to identify as really. I'm right. Native American. That's, I tell them I'm Aztec, all right? Just go with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm racially ambigu- ambiguous enough that I could pull off uh, claiming Mexican or Filipino. Yeah, yeah. So I was in line, right? And I was in a line with a whole bunch of Hispanic people because we love us some King Taco. Not all of us, but most of us. Yeah. Right. And and there were and there were they're, black people. <laughs> they're the ones who like King Taco and they're the ones who are wrong. <laughs> right. And there and uh, we were we were uh, there were there were black people in line. Right. And I'm, you know, standing there all cool, chill and shit. When I hear these these uh, Mexican dudes. Right. You know, Hispanic, probably second generation or third generation uh, Mexican people. 
uh, throwing around the N-word with black people present. And I'm like, man, is that some cartel shit? <laughs> like, why are they getting beat down and getting told to like, man, you can't say that word. Like, I, I need right. to know. I need to know. Well, I have heard that uh, I have heard that if you're a person of color, then yeah. you, you, you do get some sort of pass. I, I still don't, you know, I, I still don't throw that word around. Yeah. You know, is there a, is there a card I could present? I don't know. Hey Jones. Um, repeat that. I was, <laughs> somebody somebody shot me shot me a message. I I, I was otherwise. I was, ta- I was talking about Hispanic dudes in at, at the King Taco, uh, just throwing around the N word like you know, uh, all, in front all, of black all, people. In front of black people and black people just not saying anything. I'm like, is that some cartel shit? Like these black people are like, man, these. No, nah, I mean, look, I, I I've grew up with. <laughs> Like Latinos have always said it, as far as my life has been. Right. Like, like back in the day, I'm in elementary school in Watts. My my best friend at the time um, at school was this kid named Damien who was Mexican. And right. That motherfucker. Like back then, um, African medallions were popular. Yeah. And all the black kids had them, and one of the teachers' aides used to make them and sell them to us. Why does nigga get an African medallion or rocket though? Yeah, you know, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. so like he didn't even get Mexican colors; he got black and blue, you right? Because we were yeah. in a crip, crip neighborhood and everything. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, um, there's always been like as a kid using nigga loosely, but it yeah. was always, I know when you're calling me a nigga and trying to um right there's a tone be, be be offensive like you know back in the day i was on my way to dr manhattan's house yeah and some dudes just walked past me like fuck niggas yeah you know, oh yeah was, no that that that's definitely that's definitely a beat down tone yeah yeah <laughs> no no mm-hmm. and it was like it was two younger kids that i could totally mop up but like i'm on their block yeah so yeah you don't know who be hiding this, in the cut you don't know yeah, you the moment I smack them up, somebody's coming, and then yeah. I'm 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 in the in the sauce. Yeah, um, yeah, because look, I I bring it up because uh, there was a thing where Fifty Cent called out, you know, Fat Joe for using the N word in his songs, right? And that's why mm-hmm. I was like saying, like, is there is there a pass? Like, should I print out like this? You know, like this pass is like, hey, look, I can say it. Look, I got a pass. I, I know, think like it, like, I a, think, like a driver's license. I think it's regional. Uh, your 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 um, former brother in law tosses it around a lot, right? Um, and I think the think the problem with it now is like there's more politicizing, and because of social media, it travels more. Yeah, and the fact that you have um, Asian kids saying it and white kids saying it that ain't never touched the hood kind of deal, and don't have like a large uh, black population that they're friends with. Oh yeah, they um, don't have that. They don't have that. They don't have that bona fides. Yeah, so like back in the day, there was at least a level of bona fides with it, and it wasn't as gratuitous as it is now. Now it's just like the cool fucking word to say, and everybody's yeah. going overboard with the shit um, yeah. without context. And then with the the Latin um, black tensions that exist in certain areas, yeah, um, it becomes more questionable. Because um, I mean, with- I'm I'm six percent African, right? Uh, and I still don't feel comfortable, like, really saying it. You exactly. Know? Like, not even 6% of it. And there's only yeah. six words, <laughs> six letters. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and so, like, back in the day, like, if, if a Mexican was saying it, they were usually um, street-related. You know, so it was more of a street thing. And now it's just, like, general talking. You know, motherfuckers who ain't never been in the streets, been to jail, and they're saying it. Yeah. I don't have beef with Fat Joe because Black Joe's Puerto Rican and Puerto Ricans are Black. Yeah. Or most of them are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, I did have a problem with J-Lo saying it in one of her songs because this motherfucker plays racially ambiguous characters and kind of distances herself in certain degrees from being seen as a p- person of color in some right. respects. Right. And, so, and, and, so in it's her really acting a- career. So it's really a case by case basis, then. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, because like if you if you're down, then I understand you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like Fat right. Joe's down. 
You know, Fat yeah. Joe's been saying it since his career started. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm saying? He, I had never seen him say anything negative or racist or act funny style. So, like, I don't take any offense when he says it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He says all Latin America is Black. Like, all our culture that we have from the drums and shit like that, boom, boom, boom. All that, sh- like, he recognizes the connective tissue between the Caribbean and um, and some Latin cultures and Africa, right? Right. So he says it directly. So, like, I can't take a, too much of offense from him saying this shit because of his stance on it. Right. I don't think he he's gratuitous with it. I don't think he's trying to be negative with it or or being, you know, any way yeah. shady with it, right? Yeah. Right. Versus J Lo, who, you know, after she got on with Money Train, yeah, really don't do movies with black people. Right. Um, don't really do movies where she's described as a Latina woman unless she's doing a a biopic um right. and so yeah. like for her to come out and start acting like, like you don't even hang out with niggas like that like yeah you know soon soon as shit got dicey with the uh, puff daddy you dumped that nigga and ran off and got your white boy so yeah. like you know it's like yeah you saying that shit sounds a little weird because none of, nothing that you've done had shown that you were aligned with that with that word so for right. you and primarily she said it because that song was written by and for Ashanti who would have been okay saying those lines and then they end up deciding to give that song to J-Lo. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, so it's, it's a weird thing. I, I just, I would basically just say, look, if you ain't black, stop saying the shit. But what are street niggas going to do? Right. Right. And, yeah, and by the way, they do what they want until somebody stops them from doing it. And, yeah. You know. and, and by the way, if, if, if you if you use the word and you're not, you know, African-American, black, whatever, you know, and you use that word, trust me, uh, if you use it in a way where we could feel that hard R. Yeah. It don't matter how you say it. You could feel that hard R. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, all right. And, oh, and I think the biopic shit started when they stop putting the fucking hyphen in between the fucking words. Oh. Okay. So at some point, at some point there there's a um uh, there's been a, a a a stopping of putting that fucking um that hyphen in, in it in in written form. And that's when everybody start calling it bio, biopic. Yeah. <laughs> Motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right well i gotta go get these ginger pigs uh let's call it a night or a day whatever uh don't forget to follow us on instagram uh follow us on twitter uh subscribe and like to the channel you got a twitter uh, yeah we've been at a twitter boy. i didn't know didn't know there was a twitter yeah, there's a Twitter too. We don't Twitter. we're hardly on it, but I mean, I should I should post more. Sh- I should I should write more shit. But in fact, I should probably write most of my thoughts on on Twitter than than I do on on the Facebook. Because I mean, honestly, yes, let's face yes, it. you should. Yeah, the your, Facebook. Your, your friends are not gonna watch your fucking podcast because they can talk to you for real, for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More or less. Yeah. We need to convert strangers. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So Your friends and family are not the audience. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's so true. Like uh, I, this is one of the things I tell people who who complain or online about um what you call it, uh family not supporting you yeah. uh, in, in your business and all such shit. I'm like, your family is not your target demographic, motherfucker. If you can't convince a stranger yeah. to um part with their money for your product or service then yeah. you don't have a product or service that's true so true yeah. uh and again it, when we hit 100 subscribers man i'm gonna tell you we give everybody 20 percent off all right in yep. the store which you can go buy. You, yeah hit us up on yeah. youtube like and subscribe god damn it that's right that's right uh www.chinoandhomeboy.myshopify.com if you want to buy some Chino and Homeboy merch shit. All right? Represent. Represent, son. It's for the All culture. Right? It's for the culture. Right? <laughs> we need weed money. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. All right. Until next time, homies. Peace. And konnichiwa, bitches. And wipe that ass. <laughs> <laughs>